Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much indeed for coming back. It's always a relief when people turn up on the second day, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the delights of Edinburgh last night. Um, I did a bit of thinking about the uh, question and answer session yesterday afternoon, and I'll just repeat my gratitude for the contribution everybody made, and to please ask for the same sort of contribution today. Uh, but I was very taken by the dynamic, I hesitate to raise it, uh, the dynamic prediction service, uh, where people were concerned about whether or not that would be a useful uh, service on the bridge of a ship. And it reminded me of my my first mining officer desert course back in the early 1990s, uh, when we were all eager, newly promoted commanders sitting there, uh, talking about how we were going to manoeuvre our fantastic destroyers and frigates and things in Portsmouth Harbour. And uh, the officer instructing us got out his chart, showed us and reminded us all about advance and transfer, which is the whole business of calculating what your ship will do in certain conditions at certain speeds, how far ahead it will move and how far sideways it will move in a turn. And he got out what were known in the Royal Navy as widgets, which were uh, little cut-out cards to scale for the chart we were using of the shape of the ship's hull. And then, of course, it marked around the advance and transfer curve. Now, if that wasn't attempting to predict the ship's track uh, in certain conditions, I don't know what was. And if you've been able to look at that, if we've been able to look at that on the screen and see it being done for us, it would have saved a lot of maths that few of us were any good at. So, it just wanted to um, remind everybody that that's what's going on in a bridge team's um, calculations on uh, a, an analogue bridge, on a paper chart bridge. People are constantly calculating. I never wanted to know where I'd been. I was always wanting to know where I was about to be in the next two or three minutes, which is why the navigator was like a one-armed paper hanger. Uh, trying to predict, working hard to predict where the ship was going to be next. And you were looking at all sorts of different references, transits, and so on, calculating all the time where you thought the ship was going to be. Now, I didn't get that right in Madeira one day, uh, but that's another story. So, that's just to make this point that we are constantly trying to work out where we're going to be. We're constantly trying to predict what's going to happen next. What, of course, is really different um, is the ability of those sitting ashore to have that knowledge as well. And that, of course, is a fundamental uh, game changer in terms of how maritime operations are carried out. Now, the plan for today is to go through the rest of the services and then break out into um, workshops in the afternoon. And that made me have my second think. Um, it's very interesting when you look at how the policy and the sort of conceptual strategic thinking is emerging around e-navigation, e-maritime, and the scene setting presentations that were given yesterday. And then you look at the gumption of the partners of this uh, Axis project. We've had the NAS to go out there, make the case, get some funding, and start doing something about the practical testing of these conceptual ideas. Going out there, talking to users, finding out what they might find helpful in this digital era, and thinking about how they could be implemented in a complex sea space. And it really is getting incredibly complex out there. Um, there are lots of mariners in the room, I know, but you imagine looking at a 40 mile wide wind farm in the North Sea at night, you're going to be working hard trying to work out what's where. It's not easy. It's not easy on radar, and it's not easy visually, and GPS is just one system that you've got to support you. So it is a very, very complex sea space. And uh, I remember as a midshipman, you could navigate around it pretty much anywhere you wanted to go, apart from the old oil. It's not like that anymore. It's changed fundamentally. And so the fact that an organisation, a group of countries and institutes has had the nouse to go out there and look 
at how some services might be provided and implemented in such a sweet space, I think is really laudable. And what we're talking about here is refining those ideas, trying to work out what could be done next. So, there are nine services that have been brought up by ICC so far. I think we're looking at eight over the course of this couple of days. But if you've got an idea for the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, please pipe up and let us know. It's something else that might be fed into the melting pot for the future. And of course, there is an ambition to do something about what is generated out of axes. Some sort of sun of axes, a follow on axes, some sort of implementation phase. Now, that of course raises the spectre of what happens if you get to the stage where certain ships can't come into the North Sea because they haven't got this equipment or this Cape 30. Now, I'm not sure, I, I can imagine that, but I'm not sure it's something that would actually happen. I think you'd actually have to have an interim phase. You'd have to have deep sea pilots who were really experienced in coping with vessels that either have got this equipment, maybe, and somebody will shoot me from the margins I know, maybe those vessels wouldn't need a deep sea pilot. Maybe that could be done from shore. But maybe a very highly trained deep sea pilot would be required to go on board a vessel that's less well equipped to take it through some of the more uh, tricky parts of the ever complex North Sea. So there are some issues here which I think will come out in debate. They were coming out yesterday, training and education, awareness. Um, what skill sets does the modern digital navigator need? And some of you have heard me at other conferences say, I'm worried that we're creating a generation of GPS operators, that we aren't creating a generation of GPS navigators. And the two are quite different. So there are some issues here which go beyond just the services that have been described in the Axis portfolio. And I would like us to capture those issues, and my note takers uh, have, have been briefed. Uh, we want to capture those issues and put them to one side and use them as we start thinking about what some of Axis might look like. So again, as those issues come out, if you've got those points you want to make, please get them across so that we can capture that. And of course, there's an opportunity to break down and do that in much more detail in the workshops as well.